Good day everyone, it's me, Sir John. In this video, I'm going to discuss the introduction to conic section. So, at the end of this lesson, you will be able to first define what is a conic section, illustrate the different types of conic sections, and lastly, determine the equation of the different types of conic sections. So if you're ready, let's get started. We define a conic section or conics as a particular type of graph formed by the intersection of a plane and a double cone. Ang double cone at ang plane ay napaka-importante in making the different types of conic sections. Just like what you see on your screen, no? na merong nabubuong images or mga graph sa loob ng ating double cone kapag ka nag intersect yung plane natin or kapag ka nagkakaroon ng intersection together with the plane. Okay? So, Always remember na nakadepende sa angulo ng plane ang magiging itsura ng isang conics. In fact, we have four different types of a conic section. Namely, the circle, ellipse, parabola, and hyperbola. Let's talk about the first type of the conic section. Considering yung cone natin na naka front view and yung ating plane, since alam naman natin na two-dimensional figure lang yun, so kung titignan natin siya sa side view, meron tayong isang line. So this one is our perspective sa front view natin in general. Okay? So always remember that whenever the plane intersect the cone horizontally, di ba sabi niya dyan, when the plane is horizontal. Basically, yung ating plane is parallel siya, it's either doon sa bottom base o kaya naman doon sa top base ng ating double cone. So, yung form na conics doon is a circle. Okay, so tatandaan na whenever the plane is horizontal doon sa ating cone, we formed a circle. So, para sa 3D perspective natin, ayan yun. So, as you can see, ito yung plane natin na intersect niya yung ating double cone. That is, uh, horizontal yung pagka-intersect niya. At ito yung image na na-form or yung graph na na-form. And that is a circle. So, in relation doon sa ating Cartesian coordinate system, yan, doon sa x and y plane natin, ito yung magiging graph natin. And that is, again, a circle. Okay? So, let's proceed to the next type and form ito when the tilted plane, again, tilted plane, intersects only one cone to form a bounded curve. So again, bounded curve yun, we have what we call the ellipse. So yung ellipse at saka yung circle kanina, uh, related sila sa isa't isa kasi yung circle is a special kind of ellipse. Okay? So again, ito yung 3D perspective natin para sa ellipse and heto yung ating plane nakatilt siya ng bahagya to form a bounded curve. Okay? So heto yung tinatawag nating ellipse. So sa graph natin sa x and y uh, plane, heto yon para tayong merong circle na na stretched out lang. Okay? So again, this is what we call the ellipse. And then the third one will be formed again, tilted at the same time, parallel to the edges of the cone to form an unbounded curve. So, ito yung ating plane, sabi niya doon, uh, parallel daw siya doon sa edges ng ating double cone. So, ito yung ating edge or ito yung uh, edges, uh, I mean edge sa bottom na part at saka ito yung uh, edge doon sa top part ng ating double cone. So, as you can see, again, parallel siya dito sa edges ng ating uh, double cone. So, this is what we call the parabola. So, again, kanina, uh, bounded curve, 
but this time we have an unbounded curve. So again, this is what we call the parabola. So yung ating uh, 3D perspective, heto siya. So kung mapapansin niyo, parang meron tayong U-shaped na graph, U-shaped na graph yung ma-form natin. Okay? So kung uh, sa x and y axis natin, I mean x and y plane natin, heto yung magiging graph niya. Looks familiar, no? Para siyang graph ng isang quadratic function. Okay? So, that is for the third type of the conic section. Again, this is what we call the parabola. Lastly, somehow similar to parabola, unbounded curve, but this time, we have two unbounded curves. So, when the plane intersects both cones to form two unbounded curves. So, again, this is what we call the hyperbola. So, parang meron lang tayong dalawang parabola. Kasi nga, di ba, uh, unbounded curves siya. Yung naging difference lang niya is that yung ating plane na intersect niya both yung upper and lower part ng ating double cone. And, Yun nga, magkakaroon tayo ngayon ng two unbounded curves. Okay, so kung mapapansin nyo dito sa ating 3D uh, perspective, no, mapapansin nyo na meron tayong dalawang parabola na nasa upper and lower part ng ating uh, double cone. So, meaning to, say, meaning to say, yung graph natin ngayon will be like this. So, parang meron lang tayong dalawang parabola. Again, we have four different types of conic sections, namely the circle, ellipse, parabola, and hyperbola. So what if yung ating plane magpas through siya doon sa vertex ng ating double cone? So that is the time na papasok na yung idea about the degenerate conic sections or the degenerate conics. So again, in formal definition, the generate conic sections are formed when the plane passes through the vertex of the double cone. So meron tayong three types ng degenerate conics. So the first one is what we call the degenerate ellipse or the degenerate circle, also known as the point. So heto yon. The second one is the degenerate parabola, known as the line. And then the third one is the degenerate hyperbola known as the two intersecting lines. Okay? So these are the three types of degenerate conic sections. Again, we have point, line, and two intersecting lines. Now let's proceed to the general equation of the conic sections. Again, it is defined as ax squared plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f is equal to 0. So, always remember na yung a, c, d, e, and f natin are elements of a real numbers. Okay? So, heto pa yung isa sa pinaka-importante natin kay, uh, tan kailangang tandaan na yung a and c should not be equal to 0. But there are these cases na kung saan yung A natin is equal siya sa 0 or yung C natin is equal siya sa 0. Pero hindi pwede na silang dalawa ay sabay na mag equal to 0. Kailangan at least isa sa kanila mayroong value. So yun yung ibig nating sabihin na A and C should not be equal to 0. Okay, now the question is, how to determine the equation of the different types of conic sections? So again, yung conic section natin, yung general equation niya is ax squared plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f is equal to 0. Pero yung tanong natin dito, paano ba natin malalaman kung anong type ng conic section yung nire-represent ng isang equation? So again, yung pinakakailangan lang nating tandaan dito is kung ano ba yung value ng ating a and c. Kung ano yung numerical coefficient ng x squared natin at saka yung y squared natin that is being represented by a and c respectively. 
So, yun lang naman yung kailangan nating tandaan. So, since meron tayong four different types of the conic section, ibig sabihin, meron din tayong four cases for us to determine kung anong nire-represent ng isang equation. So, for the first case, we have A is equal to C. So, A is equal to C, meaning to say, yung A natin at saka yung C, they have uh, the same value. So, say for example, we have 1 for the A. So, para makonsider siya na circle, dapat yung C natin is equal din siya sa 1. Kung negative 2 yung A natin, dapat yung C maging negative 2 din. So, yun yung sinasabi natin na A is equal to C. And if this is the case, yung equation na yun is isa siyang circle. Okay? Again, A is equal to C. Now, for the second case, sabi niya dyan, A is equal to 0 or C is equal to 0. If that is the case, meron tayong parabola. So, ano ba yung sinasabi na A is equal to 0 or C is equal to 0? Kapag ka isa sa mga second degree terms natin, such as yung X o kaya naman yung Y, ay missing, therefore, the equation represents A parabola. Now, A and C have the same sign, no? They are both positive or they are both negative, pero A is not equal to C. Magkaiba yung numerical value nila. So, say for example, kung yung A natin is 2 at saka yung C natin is 5, diba? They are both positive, pero 2 is not equal to 5. So, therefore, the equation represents ellipse. Okay? And uh, the last case natin, if A and C have opposite sign. So, meaning to say, yung A natin, say for example, positive siya, and then yung C natin is negative siya, or vice versa, basta lagi nyo lang tatandaan, opposite sign yung numerical value or numerical coefficient ni x squared at saka ni y squared. So, therefore, the equation represents Hyperbola. So for example, we have 3x squared plus 5y squared minus 6x plus 2y minus 9 is equal to 0. So again, kailangan muna natin i-determine kung ano ba yung value ng ating a and c. Okay? So again, yung a natin, that is the numerical coefficient of x squared. And then yung ating c, that is the numerical coefficient of our y squared. So definitely dito, ito yung pinag-uusapan natin na value ng A and C natin. So again, A is equal to 3 and C is equal to 5. So kung, kung i-analyze natin sila, positive 3 and positive 5, so they have the same sign but 3 is not equal to 5. So magkaiba yung numerical value nila, therefore, this equation represents an ellipse. Now, for the second example, we have 3y squared minus 4y is equal to 2x squared plus 9x minus 3. So, kailangan muna nating uh, i-manipulate yung equation na to. We have to transpose all the terms na nasa right side to the other side or doon sa left side natin. So, para mag-equal lang siya sa 0 based doon sa definition ng ating general equation. So, by transposing 2x squared or positive 2x squared to the other side, so, ibig sabihin magiging negative 2x squared yon, and then yung ating 9x magiging negative 9x tapos yung ating negative 3 magiging positive 3. So, by arranging these terms according to their exponents and variables, we'll get negative 2x squared plus 3y squared minus 9x minus 4y plus 3 is equal to 0. Now, we can identify na kung ano ba yung value ng ating a and c. So, the value of a and c are negative 2 and 3 respectively. So, dito pa lang, alam na natin kung ano yung magiging equation or kung anong type siya ng conic section since negative 2 yung value ng ating a and then positive 3 yung value ng ating c. So, since they have opposite sign, meaning to say, it represents a 
hyperbola. So for the third example, we have 6x squared plus 12x minus y plus 5 is equal to 0. So again, meron tayong missing term dito. Meron tayong missing term. So kung mababansin ninyo, meron lang tayong 6x squared at nawawala yung ating cy squared. So definitely, kung nawawala siya, yung magiging value niya is no other than 0. So again, a is equal to 6 and c is equal to 0. So again, uh, if c is equal to 0, therefore, this equation represents a parabola. You may try to answer this activity and you are free to post this video while answering. You're done? Here are the answers. So that concludes our discussion. I hope I imparted something new to you today. And if you learned something, do not forget to like and subscribe to my account and hit the notification bell para lagi kang updated sa mga susunod ko pang videos about mathematics. So good day and thank you.